I need a haircut. But no time for that today because we got to move the old shop over into the new shop. There's a little bit of mixed feelings here because I've got so many just great memories of all the projects and all the hours I spent while I was working nights and weekends down here. I'm definitely gonna miss it. But the exciting thing is that the new shop is a lot bigger. This place is only 14 feet by 19 and a half feet. And how many of this shop can we fit into the new shop? So the biggest stuff that we're gonna need to move, probably the saw stop table saw, the x carb CNC, we'll disassemble the assembly table, disassemble the assembly table? Yeah, yeah. Before we can move all the tools from the old shop into the new shop, we need to make some space for them. And that means, you guessed it, more demolition. Let's go smash some stuff, come on in. Moving on into the woodworking shop here. I'm gonna tear down this bar so open up this floor area. I'm gonna try to save those six by six beams there, the ones that are running vertically. Could probably plane those down, make a cool little uh, industrial table out of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nails. Right there. And it does not want to come off. It's like a 16 foot two by 12 here and that makes a great joist board so I'm gonna keep that one and probably reuse it. There is some, some sort of strange, unidentified substance on the floor. It's gooey, it's yucky, it's either satisfying or disgusting. I don't know, you, you decide. It's like the consistency of used dry bubble gum. So this tile here, uh, I'm not the hugest fan of it. I'm also really not a fan of having tile in a wood shop because wheels rolling over the grout lines, just, it's just not ideal. Uh, I'd really wanted to rip all this out and do a concrete floor, but because of just timing situations, I, I, have, to, I have to move the shop over here. The polished concrete floor for the shop is gonna have to happen down the road at some point, which will mean moving everything out for a week to do it, but is what it is. Not everything is always ideal timing wise. So just a little wrap up today. You can see I'm starting to get uh, some of the smaller tools, router table stuff over, get the bigger tools later. Going out to the garage area. Also got to deal with the ceiling. Just got to get up there and try to knock all the loose plaster down for now, just so it's not like dangling there and terribly unsightly. Oh, and tomorrow we're going to knock down those big old stairs. I got someone coming getting some help to do that because yeah, those could, those could kill me. Actually, before we get to that stair demolition, I wanna show you a little bit of demolition work I did on the other side of the garage to open up the space, plus some painting and power washing. I don't know, it might be kind of mundane, but I keep hearing from you guys that you wanna see everything and I aim to please, so let's get to it. This is Kat. We've all been kind of cooped up inside the house with, you know, coronavirus, quarantine and all that. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little uh, demo therapy. So we're gonna get her a sledgehammer and, you know, take out a little quarantine aggression. There you go. You know that thing is making you stay home for two months. There you go. Demo pro! So much for not breaking the glass there. I guess I do have seven years of bad luck. We 
got a lot of space cleared up here. I'm, I'm pretty excited to open it up. Kat, okay, come in here. How was your first demo experience? How was it? I enjoyed it. Kat has an art YouTube channel. I'll link to it below. Just check it out. She's just getting going, but pretty awesome. Some of the paint is coming off here. wall just sucks up paint. I had like two thirds of this full and it's gone just on one coat. So anyway, finish that up later. But uh, one thing I'm really excited about is the possibilities with the 100 or 120 feet of walls that I've got in the garage area and it's all just painted brick currently. The plan is to get a bunch of artists in here and just do these really cool like street art murals up and down the whole thing. So just exploding with color and just a place where you feel super, super creative. So I'm looking at uh, Kipto 1000, call me. I wanna get you guys in here if we can. And if any of you guys have any suggestions of your favorite YouTube artists or artists in Chicago that you think would be cool to collab with and do some murals on the wall, then let me know. Time for a little break to have a chat about this video's sponsor who is once again, NordVPN. Nord has signed on to be a long-term sponsor of this channel. They're an awesome company. They totally get what we're doing in this community. So really excited about that. So I know none of my viewers ever do anything online that they would ever be ashamed of. What are you hiding? So why should you care? All internet service providers, including the one that you're using to watch this video right now, are required by law to collect all kinds of data about your browsing history, everything you're looking at, your websites that you visit, and so on. And there are laws that require them in certain cases to turn over all that data to the government, and sometimes they even sell this data to third parties that use it for advertising purposes. But when you use a VPN, you prevent your ISP from collecting all this data in the first place, so there's nothing for them to share. Another great thing about NordVPN is it allows you to spoof your IP address, or in normal human speak, it allows you to appear as if you're located in an entirely different place than you actually are. And this allows you to do a couple really cool things. First, I know a lot of you are home right now watching a ton of streaming content, Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, etc. Well, sometimes shows are blocked out in certain geographic regions. By spoofing your address to be from somewhere else, you can actually access entirely new content. Number two, there are a lot of websites like airlines, for example, where they'll vary the cost by location. With NordVPN, you can virtually move to a different country or location where they're charging less for an airline ticket and can save yourself a bunch of money that way. Right now, NordVPN is offering 70% off for my viewers. That's just $3.49 a month when you sign up through nordvpn.com slash industrial. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you've been thinking about a VPN or like what you've heard, Head over to that link in the description. Much love to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. And now we're gonna get over and check out that stair demolition. This was pretty fun. So a buddy of mine, Steve, who you might remember from my video making the white concrete sink, recommended his buddy, John, to help me with the demolition because, well, taking down a probably 8,000 pound steel staircase is a little bit dangerous. Definitely one of those areas where hiring help is advisable, so. Check that out. So we're taking this bad boy apart. We're gonna work from the top down. Gravity falls down and so does pieces of <laughs> steel. And we don't want to get bumped in the head. All right, they're, they're started cutting. We got sparks flying behind me. I gotta, I gotta kind of stay clear here because I don't want to get hit in the head. They gotta make a cut all the way across the landing on, on the stairs. It's a welded on cut. There's gonna be tons of sparks flying and yeah, there is a risk of fire, uh, John says. So. Because of that, we got the fire extinguisher standing by. Is it bad that I kind of want it to catch on fire just because it'll be cool? Okay. So next step is that we're gonna cut the stairs out and you can see, see them cutting them out. And after we cut the stairs out, then I guess we're going to cut the stringers out. The stairs 
step aside. Hopefully you can, you can hear me okay over here. So I've been talking to John about the way this was built, clearly in the 50s, and it's interesting discussing this trend you're seeing that this thing has really sturdy sort of materials. It's built strong, but the labor that went into it, there was just like way more labor than there was, would have been now, which makes sense. Right? Large scale manufacturing now has made the materials much less expensive and trades people are in demand. So it costs a lot more to hire them than it, than it used to back in the fifties. That, that actually, Brings up an interesting side note, and I'm just gonna kind of go off for a second here, but one thing I find interesting coming from the world of being a professional with a graduate degree, working as an attorney to now doing what I do now, I can look back and honestly say like, you know, I loved college, I had fun. If you know what you wanna do with a degree, then that's awesome. You should absolutely go for it. But if you don't, and just kind of go in because your parents think you should go, and there's something else you wanna do, or if you wanna get into the trades, I mean, go for that. There's a huge demand for trades people right now and not enough people getting into it here. There's good money to be made, good career. If you're smart, you're hardworking, just, you know, that, that's a good path. You don't, you don't need to go to college, but you do need to learn. It's not, not saying it's easy, it's not. It takes talent, it takes skill. I think we need to kind of change here the way we view the trades overall. We need to put more value on them than we do and not view it as sort of a, a lower thing than college, because it just isn't. So that came down pretty easily and safely with uh, the strap tied to it. And again, I'm, it's a bad that I kind of wanted to just like slam and crash. But yeah, safety first, right? Next step here is we're removing the steel sheet here. They just cut it out and uh, trying to pry it out, get it out safely. <laughs> Ugh, time for me to get my hands dirty and get in there. Woo! That's fun. Okay, right, give me a couple of licks. There you go. Oh, one more. One and done, baby. One and done. Almost done here. We got the, the last stringer there in the platform. They're coming off and yeah, then we'll have a, have a lot more floor space cleared up in here. All right, and now it's opened up. So today's the day for the workshop. The mover just got here, they're downstairs. I'm gonna head down and uh, see how everything's going. Yeah, it's starting to get empty in here. I'm gonna be on and then YouTube. We'll, you'll be on the YouTube. <laughs> All right, there goes the X-Carve. Shout out to Rockler, not sponsoring this video, but this little plywood moving cart sure is handy for uh, a lot of things. All packed up and uh, about ready to head over to the new building. Move all the machinery over there. There we go. And the shop has arrived. Everything is in, it is well, I still need to do a lot of organization, build a lot of shop furniture as well. Lots of work to do here, but it is starting to kind of sort of look like a workshop. And for that, I'm really excited. I'm not as excited about having to build all this workshop furniture. So if there's anybody out there who has this inspiration and love of building workshop furniture and you wanna like start a YouTube channel about building workshop furniture and you don't have a workshop to build it for, well, hey, call me, I got a workshop. You can build all the furniture you want. Anyway, I love all the space that I've got here. The layout I think will eventually change. So right now I've got the table saw right in sort of the middle here because you wanna kind of be able to work around it. I've got the workbench, which I need to actually build a new top for it. Uh, I had to rip off the old top, which was about this big just to get it moved over. But I think 
we'll be doing talking head stuff in the workshop with the brick as a background, because I like that. Generally, I'm gonna have most of the tools lining the rest of this wall. Uh, I'm gonna have a jointer and planer, which I don't know, I'll have to probably kind of rearrange things so that those are open and more usable and have a jointer and planer through here. There's a five by 10 CNC coming probably in a week. I think that's gonna go over in that corner, we'll have to see. Over here, there's gonna be a wall. So when you walk in here, there's actually gonna be a door over here you can enter into the workshop from here. Then you'll come in here, this will be a wall, so there'll be a hallway. This will go upstairs to my home. The wall will kind of go all the way along behind here, then kind of cut in right here. That wall is actually gonna give me a ton of space to put in all these wall control panels. Big fan of having things open and accessible. I'm not one of those people that needs to have everything tucked away and out of sight. I actually like kind of like this like visual clutter that's almost like an aesthetic, but organized. I'm gonna have all the stuff as much as I can out on the walls open so I can just grab it when I need it. So that is uh, the current plan. It's obviously gonna evolve a lot in here as we build this space out. And I'm, I'm super excited to have this much space. So next up in the queue, I think is gonna be the loft tour at my old place, which I'm moving out of in three weeks. So that's gotta happen. People have been asking for it. Also, Q and A, you guys have had a lot of questions. I'm trying to respond in the comments, but I can't respond to everything. So I think doing a Q and A video about the building might be kind of fun. So leave a comment below with any questions you have about zoning, permits, finances, whatever you wanna ask, ask away. If the questions are good, then we'll do the Q&A video. And I'm, and I'm guessing they will be, because you guys are awesome. With that, I do want to thank each and every one of you for being here, being part of this journey. As always, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is it for this time, and I will see you next time.